Ready Check Radio. Stand by as we get ready to serve up all your news this week in the world of gaming. Welcome to Gaming Gumbo. Hello, 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 Internet. It's Saturday at 7 p.m. Eastern. That means it's time here on Ready Check Radio for Gaming Gumbo, your weekly gaming wrap-up. As always, we're doing the show live, twitch.tv slash readycheckradio. If you're watching on YouTube or on Spotify, listening there, iTunes, whatever distribution platform, do me a favor, head on over to the website you see on the screen below in the upper right-hand corner at readycheckradio.com. You'll see all the socials. Give us a like, a subscribe, a follow, whatever you want. We've got a lot to talk about today, and every little bit helps as we close in on some milestones on YouTube, Twitter, and Twitch. So go give a follow if you haven't. And more importantly, if you like what we do here, tell a friend. It's easy, it's fast, it's cheap. I'm Mike Byrne, as always, and we're about to go through a lot. A lot. You'd like your gaming in gumbo format. <laughs> so, all right, <laughs> there's chat. Uh, easily jo- digestible. Easily digestible, yeah. Uh, joining me today, Mr. Dom Greco. What's up, sir? Hello, hello. How, how are you? How you be? How you be? Exhausted, exhausted. Why? I don't know. Just tired. I didn't sleep last night. And your eyes are a little red there. We speculated yeah, that you uh, maybe did a little smoking out before the show here, but apparently that was not the case. It's not the case. I own four cats. I'm allergic. Very, very allergic to all of them. Um. Uh, okay. Uh, do you do you own them by choice or by force? <laughs> like I'm, I'm not sure what does it. I live alone. It's like the one that's like I'm lactose intolerant. I'll have the ice cream sandwich, please. I also do that, and I also am lactose intolerant. <laughs> uh, uh, okay. Yeah. So how did mm-hmm. we end up with four cats knowing in advance mm. we're allergic yes. to them? Uh. So I've always wanted a cat. Uh, my father was always allergic to a cat, you know, to cats. And, uh, he, he was like, no. So the first thing I did when I moved out was get a cat. Okay. And, and, and at that point you would not have known yeah. whether or not you were personally allergic. Correct. Right. Correct. So, uh, then found out and then, uh, proceeded to get three more. Well, see, I was with you on the logic of this whole story till that last sentence. Like, okay, mm-hmm. you wanted a cat, never had one growing up, dad was allergic, you move out, you buy one, oh shit, I'm allergic, well, I don't want to get rid of it, you know, it's, mm-hmm. A, mm-hmm. it's bearable. The three more is where you kind yeah. of lose me here. Yeah. So the first one that I got was like a very quiet, shy, like skittish cat. Right. Uh, so at the time... Uh, I was I was seeing someone at the time, and uh, she found out that the cat that I adopted had a biological sister. So she was very upset that I left the biological sister there. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then she went and got that one. And then when we broke up, I ended up keeping both of them. Uh, also, during that time when we were also together, uh, I found a third cat that was a lot more playful and friendly and in your face. He's a male cat. So that's definitely kind of what somebody always... who's allergic to cats wants. Oh, yeah, yeah. But that's the <laughs> I kind have of cat two that cats wanted. and they kind of just live their own existence and we coexist and we're fine. I want mm-hmm. rub the one that's going to rub that shit up in my exactly. face. <laughs> exactly. So so the third that, that's the one that, that I wanted. So I made sure I adopted that one. I took that one in. The fourth one uh, is, is uh, a stray from outside. Uh, it had uh, a cat that we, we uh, we were feeding outside, had three kittens. The cat left. They stayed in my back porch over the winter. Two of them died. One one like went to the farm behind and like swallowed antifreeze and came back and like violently got sick everywhere. Very, very unfortunate story. The second one got swooped up by a turkey vulture and ripped apart of my front lawn. Was not very happy seeing that. That was not a sight that I was. I was and then I felt really bad for the third one and I didn't want anything to happen. So I took it inside. What I'm here in Troy, also on the line, Troy Blackburn, the new bridge himself. What I'm here in Troy is that there's a big part of this story that uh, was Dom being stupid to impress a woman. That I mean, that's that's a that's what I'm hearing. He was like, you know what? I'm gonna make the lady happy and get that other cat. And uh, 
Damn my breathing. Uh, Who cares? The the final cat, I was single, living alone completely. <laughs> How are you, new friend? Well, at, at that point, you're already three cats in, so you <laughs> exactly. might as well. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you're like, this can't get worse, right? <laughs> right, right. You got any pets you're allergic to, Troy? <laughs> <laughs> Luckily not. <laughs> How you Should do? I also mention I've had fish and I'm I'm allergic to seafood? <laughs> well, I mean you're not going to eat them, so I think that That's one's true. okay. <laughs> like you didn't buy the goldfish to eat it, <laughs> so I think you're all right there. <laughs> Troy, we see your doggos walking back and forth. How are you on this fine Tennessee game weekend? Doing all right. We're we're in the lead at the moment, so so the new fridge is happy. Uh, hopefully it stays that way. Just a few minutes left in the game, so you don't even I have to be, watch be the game. Throughout. You can just watch our show, get caught up on the gaming stuff, and watch Troy's mood, and you'll know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you'll know what's going on, and you'll know what's going on in the game, whether things are good or not. All right. Obviously, big news. Pretty much like the morning after last week's show, shit started going crazy. Now, technically, it started happening that night a little bit later, but we really started to get an idea of exactly how big things were and what was going on last weekend, and it's just kind of rolled out all week. Of course, talking about the biggest gaming news this past seven or eight days, the Grand Theft Auto 6 hack slash leak. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Teapot Uber Hacker getting a hold of let's just say a lot <laughs> <laughs> that's putting it mildly that's i think putting it mildly yeah getting a hold of l- a lot of stuff hacking into racks rockstar slash 2k getting out and leaking about 90 minutes of grand theft auto 6 footage now i don't think there's any game that is uh, not just meme anticipated, but also anticipated as Grand Theft Auto on a wide gaming scale right now. Planned for what, like 2025, I think was the, the the date they're throwing around, that they're confident they can get it out by 2025. So we're still years away from this title, right? Two plus years away from the title, uh, hitting store shelves. And they dropped 90 minutes-ish of snippets of gameplay. Now, the gameplay that they dropped, obviously I'm not going to be showing in B-roll because I appreciate not getting DMCA takedown. Uh, <laughs> obviously looked rough, but I, I, I was honestly surprised it wasn't rougher <laughs> Like when I was looking at, at some of it. Very uh, in development. There's hitbox, there's wireframing, there's uh, low-res textures and... You know, it's it's them playing internally, right? It's not yeah. like a first look or somebody in a beta that leaked uh, violating an NDA. Like, this is core in-development stuff. But a things, lot of the textures and models, though, seem like they were coming from GTA V. Yeah. So there's that, a lot of, like, placeholder stuff. A lot of placeholder type Which stuff. Which makes a lot of sense, yeah. Yeah, and then there's a lot of, uh, you know, kind of settings being spoiled with Vice City and timelines and things like that. So uh, very interesting what was put out there. So first, before we dig into this one, I want to know how you guys feel about leaks in general. Now, obviously, this is a, a, a bit different. This is an actual illegal act, right? Yep. Intrusion on a system to take items. And they took more than just some dev gameplay footage and things like that. I've already seen it. It's in the show notes. We're going to get there. Um, so it's kind of like, uh, I want to get your opinion on leaks in general. Data mining, um Again, violating an NDA still technically a leak, but there's an ethical violation and sometimes a legal violation there. So we'll kind of lump them in the same. Like, do you are you interested in leaks for your favorite games? Do you seek them out, or if they like, if you were really looking for GTA Six and you saw this leaked stuff, Troy is the first thing you're clicking on to go check it out. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that, that doesn't make what the person did right. <laughs> by any stretch of the imagination and they should be punished for what they did but yeah if it's out there daddy's going to look for it and i want to see it i just want to see what stage of development it's in kind of what it looks like what's going on with a game of spoilers you know abound in that kind of stuff obviously but sometimes you just want to 
You just want to see what's what's going on with a highly anticipated game. What about you, Dom? Are you a are you a chaser for your games of choice? For mm-hmm. For games, if it's something that I like, something coming out, something that I'm interested in, I try to stay away from it. I don't, I don't particularly like spoilers. This goes for any media format, like especially movies, TV shows. Like, like, I'd say the exception to that rule was uh, the Spider-Man buzz. You know, like when when that was coming out, and it's like uh, Andrew Garfield, Tobey Maguire is like, ooh, like that that kind of buzz. Interesting. I don't want to know exact plot points, but that's the kind of like buzz stuff. It has me just enough hooked to like kind of dance around. Like, should I look into it? Should I not with games, especially ones that I'm very interested in playing that are story driven or something like that. Uh, I tend to avoid if it's something that is like semi story driven, but I really don't care a whole lot about the story, especially recently, like uh, World of Warcraft, for example, uh, that stuff. I'll look into some of the data mining to see like the uh, right. character models and, and things like that, because that game gets torn apart data mind uh but I, I like if i saw world of warcraft leaks i don't care you know like it's whatever like i'll still play it i'll get a little excited for you know a new mount or a skin or something like that yeah, but, wow has to be data mind more than like any other game in history but, but <laughs> like yeah. the one the one set of leaks i don't watch for wow are the cutscenes. i avoid those you know mm. like any the the voice lines the dialogue I, I avoid any of that stuff i'd rather experience it through the game yeah and it's something obviously we see a lot more of today than when we were growing up playing games obviously the internet playing a huge part in that you Mm -hmm. can easily distribute things but then you can also connect to things that you couldn't connect to back in the day but also when you have uh, more games as a live service where there are constant patches being front loaded into clients that Hey, if if you don't properly protect those, and even sometimes if you do properly protect those, somebody can break them anyway, uh, yeah. and and put that stuff out there. I mean, we we cover we occasionally cover like bigger leaks over on MMO Bomb. We didn't cover this one because GTA isn't generally considered a multiplayer game. GTA Online being a, a little bit of an exception there, but um, so we don't really cover leaks and and stuff like that, but. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I did go watch. I did go watch. It, it's hard to find now. I mean, Rockstar and 2K went on a tirade of taking stuff down, and rightfully so. This was stuff that was stolen. Hacker also alleging, Troy, that they got the source code and the GTA, GTA 5 source code, and that they were interested in selling the GTA 5 source code, but they were not accepting any bids less than five digits, which I, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure they meant six. I, I'm, pretty, <laughs> I'm pretty sure they meant six. Yeah, five uh, digits seems a little low uh, for something like that. Uh, and that they were threatening to do something with the six source code, but they wanted Rockstar to get in touch with them first. So kind of like a ransomware type deal like Mm -hmm. i'm gonna give you the first play here rockstar get in touch with me i'm not gonna take bids on this one dot 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 yet type deal (laughs) you imagine this goes well yeah can you imagine the balls like (laughs) i mean the balls to pull it off and then like you're like oh my god i actually did it i i actually have this okay now what do i do with it what is my play now what is well i'm gonna ransomware rockstar I'm going to tell 2K Games, give me some money, bro, and I'll throw it back to you. Like, poof, the balls, the balls. It took a, it didn't take long to confirm this, by the way. A lot of times these types of leaks go a few days mm-hmm. before there's any type of confirmation. But Jason Schreier was reporting, uh, yeah, this, from all of my sources, this is legit. And then Rockstar basically the next morning confirmed on their twitter saying yeah yeah uh this did happen they shut down their social channels for a little while right then they uh they they didn't they you couldn't reply on tweets and anything like that uh and they did acknowledge that yeah reason hacker attack uh this is what was taken and we don't think it's going to anticipate or uh, impact our development cycle troy but we're really upset. At this time, we do not anticipate any disruption to our live game services nor any long-term effect on the development 
of ongoing projects. Uh, we recently suffered a network intrusion in which an unauthorized third party illegally accessed and downloaded confidential information from our systems, including early development footage for the next GTA. Uh, we are extremely disappointed to have any details of our next game shared with you all in this way. Our work on the next Grand Theft Auto game will continue as planned and will remain as committed as ever to delivering an experience to you, our players, that truly exceeds your expectations. We will update everyone again soon and, of course, will properly introduce you to this next game when it's ready. We want to thank everyone for their ongoing support through this situation. And then we got to see like a lot of other companies chiming in on support, right? Just this sucks, been there, this shouldn't happen. Uh, a couple of days later, in fact, over at Insider Gaming, there started to be a thread of uh, like a, a mega thread of just developers putting up their own uh, previous builds of things, you know, because there was a lot of criticism about the way the game looked, Troy, which didn't make sense. This game isn't yeah, due was... out for two and a half years. <laughs> Yeah, the criticism of how the game looked didn't make any sense at all. But, you know, some folks aren't as knowledgeable about the process. And as a matter of fact, I think there was some argument on Twitter that uh, somebody was trying to say that, well, graphics are always done first. It, you know, it should, you know, this is this is obviously fake because graphics are done first. No, graphics are done last. And all these other uh, developers, they come out and put out their rough pre-alpha state stuff just to show like, hey, this is what ours looked like. When we're at this point, it actually, some of our stuff looks worse than the GTA stuff looked. It really didn't make sense. Like, it just absolutely didn't make sense. It's still getting just, like, heavily criticized. So it is nice to see the, these companies like Remedy Entertainment tossing control footage out there. Sniper Elite 5, Turtle Rock doing Back for Blood. There's a whole long Twitter feed. Actually, Havoc, uh, not knowing we're going to... Put, be talking as in depth on the topic. Put the link in the chat so anybody in chat can can play right uh, play right at home. You know, play at home right right alongside us. Putting all kinds of hey, look, this is what this shit looks like, gang. No, graphics aren't done first. That's just <laughs> that's not the way this works at all at all. Mm -hmm. And then while this is going on, it appeared somebody did want to buy the GTA 5 source code, Dom, mm -hmm. and made an offer and sent money and got nothing. <gasps> Was the hacker not honest? Actually, it wasn't the hacker. Uh, so somebody using the hacker's name scammed somebody else. It's totally outside of the hacking situation. <laughs> <laughs> I go and I steal the shit and I say I'm going to sell it. Troy pretends to be me seeing this go on, <laughs> takes the money, disappears. <laughs> like, you can't make this stuff up. Oh, my God. It's absolutely insane. Yeah, <laughs> people like, being mad about debug stuff this? on the screen. Yeah, it is one of like the largest hacks in video game history. Yeah. Like, I, I think IGN or somebody like that did an article on some of the bigger hacks in history. Nintendo was a big one uh, back in, what, 2020. That was a pretty big hit that they didn't acknowledge for a long time. Uh, yeah. A bunch of stuff that was was stolen and leaked. All the way back to, like, original, like, NES, Super Nintendo, like, crazy amounts of, of data came out of that. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, at the same time here, the hacker also then got hacked. Their Proton email account was allegedly hacked, taking his family, uh, his information and family's information. And then that was put on uh, stored to Dark Web's notorious doxing website, Doxbin. Uh, and then after that, the hacker backtracked, saying that the GTA 6 source code's not for sale anymore, then was promptly banned from the GTA forums, Telegram, Discord, and many other platforms. And Take Two went on their cleaning spree of the entire internet lawyers jumped to it and then we have an arrest we have an arrest gentlemen mm -hmm. this hacker also alleged or alleged that they had hacked uber as well hence teapot uber hacker uh as the name 
Now, Uber and some other people thought that they were going to be part of a hacking organization, that this probably wasn't one individual. Uh, they kind of thought it was a group called Lapsus. Well, on Thursday the 22nd, so two days ago, City of London police arrested a 17-year-old in Oxfordshire on suspicion of hacking as part of an investigation supported by the NCA's UK National Cyber Crime Unit. He remains... Suddenly, Go ahead. Suddenly it all makes sense. What, why, why is that? 17-year-old kid with the balls. <laughs> uh, yeah, right. right. <laughs> Invincible. They know everything. Just, yeah. yeah. Now, Rockstar Games and both Uber did not comment on this arrest, and authorities didn't directly come out and say that this was in response to or had something to do with the uh, Grand Theft Auto 6 hack. But Matthew Keyes, who used to be a, a video game journalist for Reuters and, and a couple other organizations, so got the chops, got the rep, you know, that type of deal. Uh, he said you know, on Twitter that British teen arrested over the hack of Rockstar Uber had previously been charged with attacking Microsoft NVIDIA, according to a source familiar with the cases just a few hours ago. But while this was breaking, he said, yeah, this is related to Grand Theft Auto 6. I've confirmed the 17-year-old arrested in Oxfordshire for the cyber attack on Rockstar and Uber is the same teenager that was arrested earlier this year, is part of Lapsus. And uh, yeah, this this was sources were definitely, this was had to do with Rockstar and the FBI helped and it was a whole long thing. So they said it was actually two people using the account. That, that had done this. They, they've got one in custody. They did confirm lapsus. They have confirmed Rockstar through other sources. Uh, you, you go into jail for a long time, Troy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, I don't see how you get out of this one. Yeah, you hacked in, you stole stuff. Uh, may or may not have tried to ransom it, even though <laughs> you may have been intimidated or uh, impersonated. Excuse me. Uh, and the, then that was the person who tried to ransom. But either way, you're in a whole lot of trouble. And if you got caught this fast uh, and got brought into custody this fast, if you are indeed the person who committed all this, uh, then you're in some serious troubles. Yeah. Yeah. Not looking good. Not looking good. What do you think, Dom? Gonna be doing some prison time, I would imagine. Oh, he's he's gone. Like <laughs> the name is erased, scrub from existence, gone. Never, no trace. <laughs> yeah, I I mean it's it's very interesting. Like I find it fascinating. I don't particularly care about the footage. Like I, it's not like I'm looking for next-gen amazing graphics out of something like Grand Theft Auto. Like, I expect them to be on par with the current gen. I've never been mind-blown by Grand Theft Auto graphics, except maybe the exception of Grand Theft Auto 3 when it originally came out because it was such a difference from the PlayStation 1 era to the PlayStation 2 era and the overall display of, of how GTA worked. Remember, it was like a top-down thing back in the day. So, but it's not like... It, and story wise, come on. I've never played GTA for the story. Like ever. <laughs> like the game has a ever. story. <laughs> like ever. <laughs> so it's interesting to see, but this game's still two and a half years away. And was it really worth it? Like, what was the end game here? What was the end? Like, you had to know going into this, Troy, that this isn't just Rockstar and Take Two, who obviously have substantial resources on their own substant like this is a three billion dollar game the year it comes out and then an estimated two billion dollars a year after that like that's the level and that's just this game <laughs> that's that doesn't take into account any of the 2k sports or any of that stuff right substantial like but you had to know this type of breach was now going to attract the the uh intelligence communities around the world Right? Like like the FBI. Like how what was the end game here? I don't get it. 
It's, yeah, any, any, anything like, when you're attacking a company of this size, you're definitely going to get a lot of attention from, like you said, both the company's internal sources, their lawyers and so forth, but also the government is going to be coming after you and several governments coming after you, apparently. Mm-hmm. Like as soon as you touched it, your wanted meter was five stars, right? <laughs> right, Tom? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. No, you did what? not do that. What? Oh. <laughs> The tanks are coming. As soon as you touch the files, whoop, Helicopters five are stars here. right across the top of the screen. You had to know. I mean, kudos for being able to pull it off. I mean, I get a little credit where due, I guess, right? I'm impressed mm-hmm. by people that are able to do that. Uh, and hopefully, Rockstar is like, all right, let's go ahead and find that hole. Uh, it's mm-hmm. about a three foot by three or three meter <laughs> by three meter hole. Uh, yeah. apparently if you shoot a missile in it, it blows the whole company up. Uh, should we yeah, speaking of <laughs> their, their claim that no disruption at all is taking place within their development. There's no way that a breach this big has caused zero disruption within their development. Like you said, while they're plugging these holes, uh, Jason Schreier, as a matter of fact, has reported that the, a lot of slacks and stuff went down and access to, uh, Oh yeah. They shut for different developers. everything down yeah, uh, just they, on the rockstar side. They, they and, killed it all. If that's not disruption of your development process, I don't know what is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, zero, zero, though. Zero. You got to feel for the developers, right, Dom? Like, I oh, understand yeah. fans. I, I'm a fan of many, many things. If you offered me a chance to watch the next Star Wars movie a month before it came out, I would jump at that. I would love mm-hmm. that opportunity, right? Like, mm-hmm. and I get to access things through MMO bomb earlier than, than most people in a lot of cases. And that is a very cool aspect of what I do because I'm very interested in those things and I get to mess around with them early. But from the developer side, that is like, that's not the way you want. Hey, I can't wait to show the world what we've been working on. You don't want them to see it with debugging tools and and wireframe hit boxes and and things like that all over it and not by choice and you didn't get to put together a trailer and people are pissed because of the playable female character grow the fuck up. <laughs> I mean, yeah, absolutely. You got to yeah, feel like, for the devs like with, with Vice City and, and and stuff being like part of the the storyline here. Like that, they probably wanted that to be a much bigger reveal, and now you know they don't get that like that shocking reveal moment. And that's, that's definitely a a feels bad uh, situation. Yeah. I do like all these developers kind of just like coming together and being like, Hey, look at how shitty our stuff looked. A year <laughs> yeah. <happened>. yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that's, that's, that's like the silver lining though. It really Everybody's is. just like coming yeah. in support and they're like, yeah, look, it's crappy. Yeah. Look at how yeah. terrible this looked. That wasn't the only leak though this week. No. On top of that, Diablo 4, which we're kind of expected to get sometime next year, uh, from Blizzard Entertainment, had 45 minutes of gameplay leaked. Dom, tell me about it. Yeah, so, I don't know. I like, it's, they, they say it's, it's from, it's not from the final build. Like, once again, this, this is the same situation as the, as the other thing. Um, but it looks and this one closer to launch, right? I mean, we have yeah. betas coming, open and closed betas coming up, and a release next year. Yeah, but this one this actually looks pretty good. It looks pretty polished. I've watched uh, some of the footage. Uh, I did, I did. Like I said, you know, I will look at some of the stuff that I'm interested. Uh, I actually watched. I think it was uh, Asmongold uh, watching the footage. So, so reaction to a reaction. Situation. Reactionception. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah so i don't know like I, where did this footage come from because it's it was very like it was never confirmed they thought it was related yeah. to the august uh friends and family testing yeah uh but they they have not confirmed yet where but it was it, all like watermarked and everything too so it's like this footage came from uh-huh. somewhere like it's 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 internal like they they re- they released it somebody this was meant for somebody's hands Yep. You know. I mean, it looks like Diablo 4. Like it does. you know, it's got the the overhead camera. I love Diablo games, you know. It, 
famously almost got Diablo 3 the night before it was supposed to come out while we were live on Game Breaker. Didn't quite work out because I didn't get I that old that. lady at Walmart. She brought over some young guy and I was like, fuck, he ain't, he ain't letting me walk out of here with this. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> so, I remember that whole story. Yeah. You, were, you were pretty upset. I saw it on the shelf, the collector's edition, and I'm like, this is going to be sweet. I'm going to go do a Game Breaker show tonight. I'm going to have it in my hand already. I shouldn't. It'll be fun. There's like a 90-year-old lady working at Walmart behind the counter at like 11 o'clock. You don't know no better. <laughs> She's not going to know any better. It's just on the... I just need this. She's like, I don't have the key. Let me go ask uh, somebody for it. I'm like, oh, that's cool. Then some dude's like my age comes over and I'm like, shit. He certainly knows that this is not street dated yet. <laughs> sure enough, he was like, uh, what do you want? Oh, yeah, that shouldn't be on the shelf yet. I was like, shit. <laughs> Damn it. But Are people even still excited for Diablo 4, though? I'm 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 interested in it. I'm not like I haven't pre-ordered it, but that's because I'm not pre-ordering or uh, anything from Blizzard right now. Yeah. Uh let's yeah, say yeah. Blizzard yeah. was let's say Blizzard wasn't Blizzard right now. I would think mm -hmm. about pre-ordering it. Yeah. Um yeah. but I do enjoy Diablo. The problem is there's just um, if it doesn't hit it out of the park, there's just better options so, these days. Immortal didn't like taint your feelings on this. Oh, it told, oh yeah. Yeah, Immortal's just absolutely awful. It, it, Diablo Immortal is an absolute cash grab just ap oh. <laughs> and hopefully so, that's that's made at least some folks more cautious, cautiously optimistic if they're excited about Diablo 4. It, 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 I mean, Blizzard's been tripping has. over itself to say that that is not the monetization that we're putting in Diablo 4. Right, but if anything that's keeping me cautiously away from Diablo 4. Yeah. It's like Blizzard approved this game, right? They 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 gave it their their franchise flagship title, you know, whatever. Like, arguably, Diablo is is the game that made them. That, that I don't know. Like, I know Warcraft three, you know, was really big and all that. But I like personally, I feel like the first time I ever heard about Blizzard was through the original Diablo. Uh, so I, I remember getting a uh, PC Gamer magazine demo disc for the first Diablo. I think I actually still have it in my basement somewhere. Um, but like, I don't know the, the original Diablo came out and I played the demo. I remember for weeks and the demo was two levels. And I remember connecting online and playing me and my uncle would, would log on at night and just run those same two dungeons, <laughs> those two floors over and over and over again. Uh, I, I loved Diablo, but I don't know. I'm just, I'm not excited for this. I'm not. It looks good. I'm not but excited, I'm just... but I am interested in it. I, I will yeah. not buy it right now. Uh, it'll definitely be a, we'll have to wait and see how other things play out uh, before I, I go give him Blizzard well, any money. Isn't there, is, there, is there any fear in you at all, Dom, that they're going to say, you know, it's not the same monetization and all that, and it starts out that way, but then they start sliding in little things here and there? Is there any fear of that oh, at all? Like the real money auction house? Yeah, I, I think so. I think that'll <laughs> yeah. come back. Um, I don't know. I'm not against like monetization and microtransactions and stuff in games. Uh, paid games a little different, you know. But like live live game, like uh, free to, free to play or live service games, it's kind of it's the backbone, right? You need that kind of stuff to to maintain the game and survive off of. If they're turning Diablo Four into like some kind of live action or live service game, uh, then yeah, like sure, it's gonna need something like that. Um, I, it doesn't necessarily taint my opinion on it because. The Diablo franchise to me is a one and done. I will play the game exactly one time through, see the story, turn it off, never lock back on. Before we leave the topic of leaks, <laughs> <laughs> which one of you added this to the show notes? You didn't. That was me. It was you. You didn't initial that was it, me. so I had to go oh, read my it. No, it's fine. I, no, <laughs> I'll just throw it to you. But so I had to go read it. Normally, I'll leave it. I'll, I kind of to to put myself on the same par as the other hosts sometimes. Uh, mm -hmm. When they add something to the show notes, I won't go read it. Uh, I'll just throw it to whoever initials it, and then I will I get to react to it in real time, too. Uh, but I, I had to go read this, and Jesus, like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Here's so the thing, though. Is... I can't say I haven't done the same thing tweeting from the wrong account make like, the same mistake yeah. yeah 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 i mean i've access it, it didn't to, cost you it did everything not. that this no. guy it cost him no like i have mmo bombs ready check radios of my own personal one all active at the same time and just swap between accounts 
the most it's cost me is, ah, oh, shit, I just tweeted out that latest MMO Bomb article on my own account. Delete tweet, so go to MMO Bomb, tweet it out there. That's the most is it's cost me 20 seconds of work. <laughs> like, that's the most I've had to pay. But uh, this person, Troy, had to pay a little more. What? <laughs> Tell us the story. It's story time with Noob Fridge now. So a uh, notorious leaker, most recently infamous for leaking all of the Assassin's Creed titles that we talked about a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, before the um, Ubisoft forward. Yeah, yeah, there was like, what, four, five, six? <laughs> I lost count on how many. But he, he leaked all the titles for them. And initially there were some questions as to whether that was legitimate or not. But obviously it was confirmed when the initial announcement was made. Well, he was going back and forth with somebody on Twitter and... The, the guy who was trying to remain anonymous as the real insider accidentally forgot to switch his Twitter accounts from his main Twitter account, revealed himself as Dan Allen Gaming on YouTube, sent out a tweet as a, re as a reply that was intended to be from the real insider. Uh, so he's been breaking NDAs to leak this information. He's been trusted Dan Allen gaming on YouTube with all of this information ahead of time. Uh, much like we are at MMO bomb, um, given information, you know, sometimes weeks, several yeah. weeks in advance. And so he's been leaking all this information out. And once he got caught, he, he sort of put out like a, a little apology, but it really came across more as a, I'm sorry, I got caught apology. And he just flat out admitted that he was doing it for the clout. Like he, he, he just wanted the clout of being the real insider and leaking all this information ahead of time, uh, despite the fact that it's not like he was privy to information that others weren't. There were other people also privy to this information, but some of them know how to abide by NDAs. But yeah, slip up on Twitter. The man has lost uh, a, a huge following on, on YouTube. Uh, he's lost any hope of being involved in anything early anymore and having any information like that again and he's uh, put out a couple of half-assed apologies uh, that just really aren't cutting it at this point i've taken for granted my access my nearly 2000 k or 200k subscribers the flexibility of content all taken for granted for this fucking facade and i'm ashamed disgusted i have a sinking feeling in my stomach ever since then and i'm not making excuses because this is my fault and no one else's but mine. And because of it, I've lost industry friends, I've lost relationships, personal, business-wise, and opportunities, all for that five seconds of fame. And you know, I take fully full responsibility. So what's he going to do next? He, uh, he says he's going to leave the limelight for a while. <laughs> Probably a good call. I can't imagine why. And then come back as a positive force. All I can do uh -huh. from here is try to be a better human, try to learn from this catastrophic mistake, this incomprehensible stupidity. I'll take some time off now. I'm going to just go get away from it and try and learn from his my mistake and come back, hopefully, as a positive force and not a negative one. Again, I'm probably not going to come back to Twitter because I'm not welcome, nor should I be after what I've done. Maybe I'll come back, but at the end of the day, I'm just sorry, and I can't reverse time. But what I can do is try to be a better man moving forward, and I promise you that this will never happen again, and I will learn from these mistakes. You will never have to worry about this happening again. <laughs> right. This, right. Yeah, that part yeah. is 100% correct. That will never happen yeah, again. Yeah, that's been taken care of for you. Because you will never be in you. a position for that to happen again. <laughs> yeah, that one was taken oh, care of God. for you. And yeah. I hate apology videos, by the way, uh, yeah. just in general. Like, they never... The best apology video would be a six-second apology video, which is just... I'm sorry. I done <laughs> fucked up. I'm going to go away for a while. I'm really sorry. If you want to watch something else, here comes two thumbnails. You know, like, that's... <laughs> <laughs> like, that's... That's it. Like, all of these end up just becoming these, like, convoluted 8 to 15 minute, like, like you said, Troy, they end up being half-assed, even if they weren't yeah. planned to be half-assed. Well, he's, he's still milking the algorithm for views. With That's the reason that it goes so long. They're still milking the algorithm for views. Yeah. So he's still trying to score and take whatever he can from the situation. Yeah, Ubisoft chiming in on it, too, because they're the ones that kind of got rocked the most, at least the most recently, by this. We regularly provide access and information on our games under NDA, non-disclosure agreement, to trusted partners. 
when that trust is compromised or information is leaked by an individual, it's not only damaging and demoralizing to our teams, but it takes away from an exciting reveal moment and experience from our players. Yep. While we won't speak on an individual case, we do take these matters seriously and will manage accordingly. What do you think, Dom? I, I'll say, like, when I, when I first got a hold of this article and I was, I was looking at it, uh, I, I like the name, right? His, his name is, is John Allen. Mm. I, I you thought it was Josh. Josh. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, we, we, we both know. I have I a know, feeling sorry. lore yeah. wouldn't be, <laughs> yeah. wouldn't be in this and position. We, we're not, we're not talking about the football player, Josh Allen either. Right. Mm -mm. We, mm -mm. we know too many Josh Allen. Yeah, he's I got mean, better. We don't personally know the football player, Josh yeah, Allen. Right. But, you talking yeah. about it's my best friend, man. He's coming over tomorrow after the yeah. game. <laughs> Too bad you're allergic but, to him. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so I saw that and my like heart skipped a beat for a second. I was like, wait, what? You know, I, when I, I saw the picture and I was like, okay, like that doesn't match up at all. And then like I, you know, I read through. But yeah, it's absolutely insane. But I will say like the the part that I probably was disappointed the most when reading this, like sure, I, sure I was disappointed in him, but I will say the part that I was disappointed in the most was the part about Silent Hill where uh, yeah said, you know that that part was just all bullshit you know like yep. he just made that up for for extra call oh yeah that was part of it too. there were several things where he would like tease stuff like he knew something yeah he just when he didn't up. actually have any information he just liked yep. the clout here's people, the thing like people think that he knew something. I always want to give somebody the benefit of the doubt particularly if they are uh grown up enough to to face it you know, uh, fully and, and apologize. However, you are only a Paul. It's not like you were losing sleep and you were like, I got to come clean. I got to come yeah. clean. I got to come clean. You, you done fucked up and you tried yeah. to erase the fact that you fucked up almost immediately. Mm -hmm. It was too late. Other people had snapped the screens already. The proof was in the pudding and you knew the jig was up. You know, it's like when the cops are knocking at the door and you've got that body back there, you, you I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do it. I didn't mean <laughs> yeah, to yeah, do odds it. Are, odds are if you didn't get caught, you'd be leaking something next week. Yeah, 100%. 100%. I absolutely True. believe that. And like like you said, like uh, you, you've you done this where you've accidentally tweeted from the wrong account, you know, and stuff like that. Like I have business to a, a company account, but luckily it's separated in a way that I will never make that mistake. I never tweet uh, from my computer on my personal account. I only do that on my phone. And and uh, the the gaggle account that I've access to 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 do tweeting out like we only do that straight through like uh, uh, tweet deck so I don't have to worry about accidentally ever tweeting on the wrong platform and that is great it's a great well fail safe. you'd be a better leaker you should get on that. <laughs> I, would, I would not be a leaker you should get on that I would not get in some NDAs Dom yeah go find out about Silent Hill and let us know dog. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they wouldn't. They wouldn't let me go near. I mean, Silent Konami's got to do I something, like, right? I'm not signing this NDA. I'm talking about this. It, you know, like I would just not sign it. it Konami's got to do something, right? Like Pachinko yeah, Machines yeah. just like took a bloodbath because of COVID. That, Nobody was that Silent Hill. Oh. Yeah. Ugh. All right, let's get a few miscellaneous news beats out of here, and then we'll call it a week with our games of the week. Uh, first up. <laughs> What the hell is this, and where did it come from? Holy hell. Like, this game has just taken over. It has taken over. Trombone Champ. Yes, Trombone <laughs> Champ. <laughs> I saw this. It's, I gotta buy this. I haven't bought it yet. It's 15 bucks on Steam. 100% I'm buying this. You know me and rhythm games to begin with. This is a trombone-based rhythm game. And if you didn't, if I can't, I'm not playing the music, but if you haven't seen this trailer, you got to go check it out. It is, as somebody in the comments said it, and I agree with them. It is the best use of Old Grey Mare song in the last yes. hundred years. <laughs> like, absolutely. <laughs> Guitar hero with a trombone, Troy, and it is taking over the internet. Are you in? I had never even heard of this until you <laughs> liked it in here. I, somehow I missed it. I'm usually like mainstream stuff. I usually end up catching. 
uh, coming my way, but this one, I've never heard of it. Eh, it's a rhythm game, so it's not really up my alley. Oh. Normally, when, when like these little samples for like, oh, it's a rhythm game, you put the thing out, I'll yeah. listen to like the first 20 seconds. I listened to the full two minute mm -hmm. like tw Twitter video of the thing, and I was like cracking up laughing the entire time. Yeah, absolutely oh, incredible. So yeah, I will definitely be buying this. We will definitely stream it. It's out now. I just haven't gotten a chance to buy it yet. Uh, by Holy Wow Studios, and it is taking over the internet. I in a day or two more, it'll own the internet. It it'll be right up there with cat videos, I'm sure. Right up there with cat videos. Trombone champ. I just wish it had a peripheral. Like, like <laughs> give me a guitar for Guitar Hero. The drums is fine. Give me a trombone. Give me a trombone. Give me yeah. a trombone. Let's do this. If we're going to do this, let's do this, Troy. Video game. Go ahead. Dude, if they had like a little, like a little trombone you could play and stuff, then, then, then I might have to buy that. Game. Hell yeah, hell yeah. I have the audio playing again while we're talking <laughs> about it. It's so good. It's amazing. It's just so good. It's oh, that's right. We should reach out to Super Lewis sixty four. Get him to hook us up. We talk about uh, his latest videos a, a lot over on the Relic Grind on Thursday nights because he does a lot of playing Final Fantasy characters and jobs with specific controllers that he makes. Um, mm -hmm. So, like, he did um, Arcanist with a book and a pencil, and, like, he rigged it all up so that writing things would cast different spells. And, yeah, he played, uh, it, yeah, anyway. He played Overwatch uh, with a ring fit. And a trampoline. He was playing Overwatch. He was a sweaty mess. But he turned a ring fit and a trampoline into an Overwatch controller. So, yeah, we'll have to get him to make a uh, a trombone one for us. A like my favorite part about this, though, is... Hey, the, Canadian it, Thor, we have the technology. Somebody will make it happen. <laughs> I agree. Somebody will. Some, like... He the the developer of this game has gone on record saying he's never played a trombone in yeah. his life. Yeah. Oh, absolutely love it. I guess he was worried that the uh, actual trombone players uh, would feel like they're loving it. Uh, insulted. There are and, so yeah, many YouTube videos opposite. of like yeah. actual trombone <laughs> player playing trombone champ, and I'm just like, <laughs> I I freaking you know me in rhythm games. I love them. I'm. I'm moderately good at them. Like I'm not going to be at any competitions anytime soon, but I, I hold my own, let's say, uh, yeah. whether it's a dance pad, a keyboard, a guitar, whatever it is. But yeah, now I want a trombone. Who, where the hell am I going to put that? I still have all that rock band equipment <laughs> in the garage. I have, I have three rock band drum sets in my basement. I just walked by them earlier today. Video Game Donkey, uh, now going to be a publisher. I kind of like this, actually. Like, some people mm -hmm. not all that keen uh, with Jason Gastro, well, better known as uh, Video Game Donkey. Uh, does YouTube videos, if you've never heard of, uh, you're probably one of the few. Uh, videos get millions of views. Very popular gaming review type content uh, over on YouTube. But now uh, he and his wife, Leah... They're going to start a indie label called Big Mode. And what they're going to be doing with their publishing label is going after indie games that they are fans of that really haven't been widely uh, talked about or widely shown or anything like that, like catching them on the very young side of development and assisting them. Um, so kind of like a, an indie angel investor type publishing company. I absolutely think this is fantastic. I love love his content. Love his content. I don't watch it as much now. It's just kind of like I've I've grown out of that that style, and that's okay. Uh, but I absolutely think this is just brilliant. I can't wait to see some of the wonderful titles that are going to come out of there. And now a, a lot of other. Go ahead. I was just going to say, it's always great to see, see, I don't know, see somebody who has a real passion for video games get involved Definitely. in the actual business side of it and to mm -hmm. see somebody who cares as much as he does and it puts as much effort into what he does. Uh, I can't imagine the amount of effort that will go into the, the publishing side of this as well uh, because he cares a lot about these games, especially the indie games. That's 
That's his, it's his love, his first love. And to see him produce a publishing company where he wants to go out there and help promote more of these and get more of these out there from companies who wouldn't necessarily get that kind of attention. I think that's, I'm, I'm with you. This is absolutely fantastic. Yeah. I agree. I just I just want to know when is the trombone champ review coming in? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. Uh right now on Steam charts, you may not believe this, but Cyberpunk 2077 has 90,000 players in the last hour. Boy, it's made yeah. a comeback. 24 hour sure peak, uh closing in on 122,000. Some big numbers there. But that's just Steam, brothers and sisters. That's just Steam. Mm. So how well is the game doing in this kind of renaissance for cyberpunk? Well, according to a message on the game's official Twitter account, each day of this week, Night City has been visited by one million players, both new and returning. We wanted to use this opportunity to thank you for being with us and playing the game. One million each day, Troy, across all platforms. Uh, if true, that is damn impressive. Now, Cyberpunk, when we've talked about it on the show, is obviously we had the kind of the same mm -hmm. opinions as many. This game will probably be very, very good six months from now, eight months from now, a year from now. When it came out, we had those types of opinions. I own it on Steam and literally turned it into one of those I'm going to come back like a year from now and play this. Uh, I'm just going to stop right now. So I'm not all that surprised that it's having a little bit of a renaissance, but that damn anime, I haven't gotten a chance to watch it yet. It is I amazing it. how many times I have seen people reply about that show as this mm -hmm. made me want to go back and play cyberpunk and I'm loving it. Like, I talk about getting your stuff into multiple markets and using one to cash in the other. Well, way to go! Way to way to use another medium to make your. You wanted this game to make a comeback. Uh, obviously, they did. They they wanted to be able to. They wanted their no man's sky moment, right? They wanted to be, you know, hey, look at us now. Look look at where we are now. Yeah, we screwed up in the beginning, but to see another medium like this and the, the Witcher show kind of did the same thing for the Witcher game. Uh, every time a season of that comes out, uh, people flock back and play The Witcher three. Um, I, I went back to Swotor next for the season, Mandalorian. Spring of next year yeah the witcher so spring of next year so, you know, though these shows if they're good man they can they can really do a lot for your your other mediums out there for your ip such as your video games i'm watching the jeffrey dahmer thing on netflix right now so i wonder what game that's going to get me to play uh oh, no. i'm not sure no. postal <laughs> 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 oh. you cut deep friend you cut deep you cut deep so I you, was really uh, excited uh, for Cyberpunk. Though, how far did you get like, into Cyberpunk? Because I was excited for we, it too. I got I think to we just like had this discussion. Did recently. we? I think we did. We both got to just shortly after. You like the started, first time like, Keanu Reeves is in your yeah. apartment. Yeah, 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 yeah. You started like tripping out there or whatever. Like that's that that's where I made it to. The game was way too buggy. I was playing yeah. on the PS4. I think were I was were on you Steam. On the PS4? I was on Steam. You were on Steam. Yeah. And it was just, it was brutal at yep. one point. PS4 was the worst version. Yeah, PS4 was the worst at launch. I remember at one point going, this isn't so bad. See, what is everybody complaining about? And then I fell through an elevator and I was like, okay. <laughs> I do feel bad for you, though. I mean, you're going to have to upgrade to the PS5 version if you want to continue yep. that because the expansion is going to be PS5 and uh, yep. Xbox SX only. Yeah. yeah. I think if I'm not mistaken, it had a free upgrade. That, I think that was the reason why I bought it on, on PS4 was the physical had a free upgrade to five. Yeah, and then that was delayed and all that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> but I haven't gone back to it yet. I know a lot of people have gone back recently and are loving it. I, I think maybe it might be time for, for me to hit that on the stream, but that'll uh, certainly be after we trombone it up. Did, did either of you watch Edge Runners? I haven't yet. I, I haven't yet. Yeah, I was actually just talking to Havoc. I was over his house last night for his birthday, and... and we were getting ready to watch something on Netflix. He was showing me the Jeffrey Dahmer thing, and mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and the the flash panel came up for it. And I said, "Hey, have you yeah. watched this yet?" And he said, "No." And I said, "I keep trying to like make time to watch this because I hear it's absolutely incredible, and like emotionally, people are emotionally involved and then want to go play the game. Which, if you don't know, there's emotional moments in that too. 
So mm-hmm. yeah, I have not watched it yet. I definitely will. Yeah, I haven't seen it either. I like I still haven't watched the League of Legends one. Uh I think it's like Torchwood when... keeps trying to get me to watch that too. He's like yeah. I, if you don't the League of Legends one is good, even yeah, if you're not Arcane. A League of that's, yeah. that's what I've heard. That's what yeah. I've heard. But it's like I can't help but when when things like Resident Evil come out, you know, it's like it makes me really turned off from watching video game media. You know, like the the uh, one that I've actually been really looking forward to uh, is is they they've said they're gonna do a Hunt Showdown TV series in the game. If you like go deep dive into the lore for Hunt Showdown, it's very dark and very visceral of like baby fetuses come uh, like to life and it, it really weird like things going on so it's like i want to see how that's portrayed in like a tv series so i'm very very excited for that one but so what they're it, just they're, in general like what they're born i mean the baby that's how a baby fetus becomes alive right well just... no it, so the, yeah um it uh, a dead i should say the, the ah, mother yes the that mother keyword died. missing there yes. <laughs> keyword the mother missing died. there it, the baby fetus like was infected with the plague and it like grew out and turned into this creature known as they call it in the game a meathead that's infected with leeches. I don't know. The game is just really dark, really, really dark. It's crazy with lore. The lore is ab- absolutely insane. So when they announced they were doing a TV series for it instantly, I was like, I'm excited. But it's been like six to eight months since we've heard about the TV series. I have no clue. It's supposed to be coming out this year. Isn't There's it, no announcement. We're, we're at the end of the year. Isn't already. It's just like you a know? like a a pvp like bounty hunting game like i wouldn't have thought yeah i wouldn't have thought there would have been much lore in like if you look into the lore of the game you will absolutely be in shock it's just it's insane hey did you know that games journalists uh were surveyed troy and they said and 75 percent of them apparently said that they won't cover blockchain game news it's not very popular, especially amongst the journalists, I guess. I know we, we've we talked about them in the past, but never in a positive light in any stretch of the imagination. Yeah, so PR, a video game PR agency, Big Games Machine, according to VentureBeat, sent out a survey to 160 writers. VentureBeat claiming they did not get this survey. Big, big Games Machine saying, we did send it to you, so maybe it got lost in uh, spam. But out of 160 writers to game journalist sites, 75% said that it was unlikely or not likely that they would cover blockchain gaming news in the next six months to a year. Uh, When you ask me, yeah, we will cover it. Absolutely. I mean, we'll talk about it here, but this is not really a journalistic site. But over on MMOBomb.com, we will absolutely talk about it because I love laughing at you. (laughs) <laughs> Last thing that we're going to talk about before we go over to the game, Splinter Cell Remake is looking for a writer. So if you are a writer, they would like you to apply. You, uh, Ubisoft Toronto is looking to recruit a, scre- a script writer to take the original game's story and mold it for a modern-day audience. I'm all for it. I'm all for it. If you're a writer and you want a job... Go ahead and apply. Let's head over and close the show out with Games of the Week. Every episode here of Gaming Gumbo every Saturday with Games of the Week. Each of the three of us is going to give you a game. Could be a board game, card game, video game, mobile game, whatever. Something we're playing now, played in the past, or haven't played, but we think you should play. And you let us know in the comments or over on readycheckradio.com. Who gave the best recommendation this week? Troy, you're first. Go over to the place where you visit your games in jail. Oh, the Epic Game Store. Known as the Epic Game Store. And get yourself Gloomhaven Digital Edition for absolutely the low, low cost of free. Yeah, till Wednesday. This weekend. So you need to to get over there and get that. Um, That is the number one tabletop game on board game geek has been for a long time it's a very popular dungeon crawling game uh it's got a bit of a card system involved with it but not like a ccg it's just your cards or your abilities and what you can and can't do instead of rolling dice so go over there and check that out it's an absolute fantastic tabletop game it's an absolutely fantastic digital version of a tabletop game and even though it's on the epic game store you can get it for the low low price of ferrari yeah while you're there the other game free this week if you want to grab it is arc survival evolved as well so you can snag wasn't arc just recently free on steam as well yeah yeah a little while ago yeah 
Go ahead, Dom. Um, I mean, I, I guess I'm going to have to uh, say maybe it's time to give Cyberpunk another look. It just might be. Just might be time. Hmm. 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 I've been playing Legend of Dragoon again on the PlayStation 1 because uh, Flynn, who you've probably seen in chat and does the Within Crisis podcast, just started doing some podcasting this year. So go check him out, a friend of the show. Uh, I got to be on his first podcast. He, he invited me over. That was very, very kind and very fun. But he wants to do a, a Legend of Dragoon episode. So I've been doing a replay of it on my Steam Deck. <sighs> Loving it. I mean, I've got the the discs right there. You can see them in the back. But absolutely loving it. If you've never played it, it's probably a little slower than like your modern RPG fan is going to want the combat and stuff to be. But hey, that's the way it was in the PlayStation 1 era, kids. That's the Steam way it Deck, was. That's the same uh, console that uh, Terrors or Tears of the Kingdom is coming out on, right? Oh, yeah. Like everything's coming out on it. Like anything that Nintendo puts out is absolutely, yeah, yeah. Just I'm going to play Rabbids on it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'll buy it. I'm going to buy the Rabbids. I got to buy yeah, it. Yeah. You know? have to. I have oh, to. Oh, that game is so good. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Uh, you, so, know, you know, the week that game comes out, what my game of the week is. So don't oh, even try to take yeah. it. Like, I won't take try. it. I won't take it. I'll find something better. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> let us know in the comments who gave the best recommendation. Of course, we'll be back with another episode of Gaming Gumbo next Saturday. No Torchwick tonight. His roommate, uh, one of the rare occasions his roommate stays in the dorm to, for the weekend, so doesn't want to stream while his roommate's sleeping behind him. Uh, so the no stream, time to stream. <laughs> right? No stream this week. He'll be back next week, uh, just as we will. Don't miss us on Thursday night, 7 p.m. Eastern, for the Relic Grind, our Final Fantasy 14 Square Enix show, our Final Fantasy trading card game streams on Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern, and then all of our other streams throughout the week. We will have Tarkov later tonight at midnight, uh, and then, yeah, just keep hanging out. Follow us on Twitter, and you'll always get a tweet. Until next time, Troy, where can everybody find you? Hey, give me a follow on twitch.tv slash noobfridge. I've been streaming a little bit over there, so uh, give me a follow. Dom. You can find me down below at Itzista, and you can also find me uh, on this week's uh, Always Online uh, podcast episode on MMO Mobile. There you go. I'm Mike Byrne. You can follow me right there at Magic Man One, but more importantly, follow at RC Radio, R A I D E O, on Twitter, and you'll know every time we go live with a podcast or a stream. Until next week, stay safe. We'll see you on the servers. Wow.